three, I mean, four seventeen. So get ready for tomorrow's video. Already have it ready. So today, guys, uh, what's the vertex of the quadratic function modeled by this one here? So how do I approach and get this one here? What do we do here? Uh, once I see this setup, I'm thinking already y is equal. I'm already setting that up in my brain to go to the. Anybody know where to go? The calculator. And I'm going to graph it. I'm already going to graph it. Thank you, Dave Lonnie. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to go to graphs. And I'm going to check. <coughs> sorry, I'm going to type it in there. So it's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 5. You need to know how to do that. x squared minus 8x plus 5. Now I'm going to go double check. x squared minus uh, Cool. Now make sure you know they want the vertex. Now if the vertex, this is the lowest point. High point. How about this? Let's think about this one. What? Do you all know if it's opening up or just is it opening down? What do you know? What do you know about this one? Opening up or opening down? Or we just learned this last week. Because of this, it's positive, it opens up. Okay, this is my wire intercept right here. Uh, graph it. Now, it's somewhere there. I don't know what it is. But I do see that it goes down like this and then comes back up. It's opening up. So I'm going to come out here and go to menu. I'm going to go to analyze graph, and I'm going to find the minimum, the lowest point. So I'm going to go here, here, and tell me 4, negative 11. So my vertex is at 4, negative 11. Pretty cool. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to go to 4, negative 11, and there's my answer. Uh, let me see. Next one. Which expression is equivalent to this? Now, this one's not too hard, but it's not too easy. We hardly use this. There will be like three questions of this on the star test, so you got to be aware of this. Now, this, um, I guess, this is called just, you know, simplification or rewriting or, you know, making it neater than what's there. You have to remember the several rules. When they're next to each other, you multiply it. When it's the power of power, I'm sorry, when next to each other, you add. When they're power of power, you multiply. When they're over each other, you subtract, slash, all the, uh, I guess, the different forms of this stuff is written in your reference material. You get a good reference material and tell you what to do. So here I would multiply the powers. So this becomes two squared. This becomes x to the x to the six y to the four. Over this one just stays x and y. Um, this right here, this part right here becomes four. Now here I have x to the six over x y to the fourth over y. Now, I don't know what you want to do, but if you can really think about what's happening here, they cancel out. How many cancel out? Uh, four, which you're supposed to do this, x to the six minus the one from the bottom. The top one, y to the fourth minus the one from the bottom. So it becomes four, x to the five, y to the third. That's your final answer. Uh, yeah, that's it. Now, if you want to look at this one real quick, guys, remember saying that was canceling out? This video here says x times x times x times x times x times x. This is just x. So this one x would cancel out. Well, you can say that one. And how many are left on top? Uh, what's the total line of passage to these points? Ooh, come on, guys. Please, you need to know this one. What do I do on this one? This is so uh, <laughs> super easy, I think. What do y'all want to do on this one? How do you want to do this one? Okay, so remember, the slope is your M. I'm going to show you two different ways. Right, you got to be really good in your brain for this one. It's really easy. you got several things. I don't like to think, so I had to go to menu 413. Two distance questions, 2.54418. Got to turn the calculator. Oops. Turn the calculator. Now let's go to this spreadsheet. 4 and 6. Oh, great. I forgot the answer. 5 and 12, 418. 5, 12, 14. 12. Or eight. Okay, come out here, go to menu, four, one, three, B. 
enter of B. And there's my slope. I'm looking for my slope, and it says my slope to be a negative six. Now, okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. That wasn't the fastest, but it wasn't bad, was it? That wasn't too bad. That's my answer. I will tell you this much. You should remember as change in Y over change in X. <clears throat> you gotta be good at math though, ready? 18 minus 12, you think in your head, okay, my pen is going to serve 18 minus 12 over four minus five. Four. Same direction. This top one gives me six, the bottom gives me an eight of one, both together give me an eight of two. You decide what you want to do. <coughs> Now, in this situation here, you're going to kind of think what's going on here. This is sixth grade. This is really sixth grade math. I don't know how you want to remember this. The sky is the limit. You can kind of think like, well, what happens to this when we come down? Times six, right? So what times six gave me this? I'm going to say that's one way of working it out. I don't know how you want to work it out. But in sixth grade, and this is the way I would want you to work it out, these vary directly. So you're going to say, um, when you see that, you want to think proportional. When it comes to proportional, guys, this is what you want to do. This and this. So I'm going to go X over Y because they gave me X first. And I'm going to have here 5 over 30 is equal to X over Y. Same X over Y, same X over Y. This one here is 12. Right, y is 12, y to the bottom, and x here, I don't know, it's cross multiply. Divide 5 times 12 is 60. Divide by 30, 2. Okay, really easy. Really, really easy. Questions over that, guys? How do we feel on that one? Okay, so anytime you hear a form of is, there it is. Okay, you gotta go with the equal sign. So length of a rectangle, length is five less than this guy means put minus five. Twice the width. So look for this one. Length is from I like that one so far. Length is actually that's the real answer. <clears throat> Why is it not this one? Because you gotta understand what. Okay, in seventh grade math, you're supposed to learn this. Five less than. When it says five less than, that means it goes at the end. Because you're making this five less than, this whole thing five less than, twice the number. Okay? If you were to have five minus, it'd be five minus. Whoa, what are the solutions? Ugh. How do I do this one, guys? How do I do this one? Please, somebody, what are the solutions to the quadratic equation? How do I do this one? Leilani, Tristan, what do I do, brother? No, I do not. No, LCM, those common multiple, is that right? Nope. Christopher, come on. Nathaniel, what's going on? You see this right here? What should you automatically think? Ground. Yeah, you got it. Perfect. So you come on here, turn the calculator. I'm going to go uh, x squared minus 4x minus On. Graph. x squared. Minus four x. I think plus twenty one. <clears throat> no, oh, minus twenty one. X squared minus four x minus twenty one. Okay, if you look what I put here, guys. Look what I put. I did not put the x. I mean the the, the y stuff. I did not put this stuff here. Okay, this is me saying that y is equal to zero. When I want the solutions, I'm looking for the x-intercept. Now, if you're on the x-axis, what do you know about this? You know that y is equal to zero. If you're here at this coordinate right there, that's my x-intercept. 
what that coordinate is, this is 2, 0. That means that y is equal to 0. And got to be the, oh my, the ball is up. So that one I'll come back and I'm going to say, well, graph it. And there are my two answers. You can, you can go like this, menu, look at the right view, grid, line grid, and now you can count them. And you can see that, okay, it's right here at a one, two, three, at a negative three, and a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a seven. I can, I can do that. I can do that. I can also do this. Go ahead and menu, analyze graph, find my zero, which is my x-intercept, and there it is, name zero. I can find the other one. Go analyze graph. Find the other zero. Go to the left. Go to the right. There it is. A positive seven. Now I can do it another way. I can go to menu. I can go to analyze graph. I can go to trace. I mean, whatever. There it is. Okay. And then I just go past the x-axis. See, I'm looking at this. This is a negative. So as long as I go up, go a little bit too far. There, there's one of my zeros. I can type in over here. Uh, I'll type in seven, so I can jump over there. And there's my other zero. So I go over that way, and then I come back, and continue there. So there are cool things you can do. Uh, come back to this thing right here. Okay, what's the solution? Ooh, what do I do here, guys? Anybody know what to do here? Anybody know what to do here? I'm curious. Come on. Let's see what you say. They learn to go. Plug it in. No. Nope. Graph. No. Nope. Christopher. I'm trying to show you the fastest and easiest way, guys. Mm, you, you want to find basically the x and the y. So I'm both. All of y'all are wrong. So let's go over here. Pay attention to this one, ready? What you want to do in this one, you got to understand what it's asking. Solution is where they cross. So if the lines cross. That's your solution, one of these two, right? If the lines never cross, that's no solution. If the lines happen to be the same line, you know, infinite many solutions, okay? So first off, I'm not gonna do thinking here. <clears throat> you can, all those things you guys, you said, you can do it. I'm not saying they're wrong. I just, which is the best and easiest way? Pay attention to this one, right? Go ahead, calculator, go right here. Now, I don't show you this up in the calculator. Y'all probably hate me already because so there's so many cool things you know the calculator. During the school year, guys, if we had a regular school year, yes, I would show you all these things as we're going along. But I wouldn't want you to rely on them. Okay? So right now, the class is only 30 minutes. I don't want you to rely on them and not know how to do the rest. So again, this is the thing I'm asking here. Two equations of a line. 3x plus 5x. You go here. Menu. 3, 2. And it gives you the answers for both equations at the same time. Let me show you that again, okay? I'll turn it on, new document. I go to the regular calculator. I'm gonna to go to menu, and it's an algebra, and it's gonna be systems, solve systems of linear equations. Two equations, and there it is. And now I should type in the number. So pay attention to the way I do it. Three X plus five Y. Three X plus five Y equals, <clears throat> my bad, negative two. And I'll just come in here, write in the next equation. 3x is equal to negative 5y minus 2. 3x. 3x equals negative 5y minus 2. Negative, I think it's 5y minus 2. Oh, that's right. Let's see. Negative 5y minus 2. So it's a negative 5. And that yeah, answer, there's your answer. Okay, I don't know why, guys. This is weird. You see that right there? I don't know why it does it to us. That's infinite many solutions. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, that is not. Ready? You see that one? It's not that. It's not that. It would actually say no solution. I still don't know why it gives me that weird answer if it's infinite many solutions. Okay, pretty cool or what? 
So again, let me show you how to get there. You go to menu. But okay, first off, you need to be in, on a new character. You go to a character and you go to menu three two. And you type in everything and no thinking. Hey Donnie, did you see that? Tristan, you see that? Jasmine, you see that? It's pretty cool, right? Now, again, I didn't tell you guys. Once you you just boom, learn all these little tricks. The joke, the test is. I'm gonna tell you this much. So this is your whole test. Sixty percent on the calculator. The other forty percent. Okay, that looks like almost 50 50, but the other 40% is volcano. And also, like, vertical line test. Like stuff like that. Okay, very easy stuff. Uh, let's take a listen. Does not. Okay, now, ooh, this is a tough one, but it's a good one. I won't lie to you, it's a tough one, but it's a good one. Which of the four tables does not represent the quadratic function? Okay. So I'm sorry, but you're actually going to have to use some some thicket twitiveness. Like you get, you can't quit on yourself, okay? So what I'm going to do is do this. I'm going to make this smaller here so I can see the numbers. I'm going to use my calculator here just for the size a little bit. So I can see my numbers here. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here on. I want my my pen's moving so slow. Okay, I'm turning on new document. No, I'm not gonna save it. This is spreadsheet. Uh, I do need this one here. So I want to type in the numbers for this table over here. Ready? So I'm gonna go with the top one. Zero. Two, three, four. This next one, zero here. I want to have a negative 11 here. A zero here, a seven here, a 12 here. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go to menu, four, one. Guys, it's asking if it's a quadratic. So I'm going to go to quadratic regression. This one tells me here if it's quadratic. I'll show you how I tell you if it's quadratic or not. It's right here. You want to scroll down a little bit? You see how this R squared? That's like your relation. You're, you're, how close is it to being quadratic? Well, it's close, but I'm going to say it's not. Okay. And what was the question asking? Does not represent. Oh, I think that's my answer. Because if it is a quadratic, let me make sure I copy these numbers right. Zero goes to 11, two goes to zero, three goes to seven, four. If it's not a quadratic, these numbers are not one. If they are quadratic, then they are a one. So let me let me show you this one real quick. I'm gonna type in these numbers, negative two. And look at this. Since I already have it set up for a quadratic, if I change these numbers, if I change these numbers that are right here, these numbers will automatically change. Come on. This thing's really in a second. These numbers will automatically change this computation over here. So I'm going to go to negative two here, negative one. You can see if I press enter, they're already changing. One, three. When I come over here, I'll go with a zero, negative three, negative three. Uh, five. So let me scroll down. You see how this one shows you that R squared I means R squared is a quadratic. Is it a quadratic? Is it yes or no? That one is quadratic. This one is not. Okay, so what does it mean to be quadratic? In this situation, I'm just going to show you the graph. If you don't mind, I'm just going to make up a graph. When it's quadratic, You get this kind of U, right? That a parabola. That's quadratic. And that's your R is equal to one and your R squared is equal to one. Okay, when it's not quadratic, it's gonna be 
just show me that it looks kind of like, like maybe a squiggly line. Maybe it, it, it doesn't look like a U so much. And maybe it goes down. Basically, it's not just brown. And that means that your R is not equal to 1. Now, the closer it is to 1, the closer your R squared, I'm sorry, your R squared is, closer it is to 1, the closer it is to being quadratic. If that makes sense. Say maybe it is a quadratic for the most part. Come on. Sorry, guys, my pen is running so slow. Hey, it is a quadratic for the most part, and then there's a point off over here. You got it? And it goes back up. It might look like one. The closer it is to one, it is. The closer it is to one, the one is. The closer it is, the closer it looks like a quadratic. So I might be saying the same thing over and over. Sorry about that. Next to the next one. What is the solution to this inequality? Um, you know what? I was just plug them in. Uh, do I show you how to do this in the calculator? Do I show you how to do this in the calculator or not? Yes or no? What do you all think? You just plug it in exactly the way you see it. Well, what do you mean? Turn it on, go to here. No. Uh, calculator. And type that exactly in there the way you see it. Right? I'm typing in there. Negative 3 times my x. But my x for this situation. x equals to 0, and here, y is equal to 0. So I'm going to type it in the calculator. I'm going to type it in over here exactly like that. So now I have 3 times 0, print 3, I'm oh, not there, minus 2 times 0. Look how cool this calculator is. Do you see right here how it says right above it in blue, it has those inequality signs, control, equal sign? Put that exact same one right there and put negative one. Enter, it's false. So I'm gonna tell you this much. This one is not my answer. Guys, you're not cheating, this is algebra. They basically wanna know, can you understand X and Y? Do you understand what this and this means? Well, if you plug it in there, it shouldn't be less than negative one, yes. You're just not doing the work because can't you multiply 3 times 0 and 2 times 0? It's really easy. It's really basic at this point. Now that you're saying the process, you want to make this thing, and the key word is solution. You want to know what I want to make this thing true. So next one, I'm going to go 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative 3. Negative 3 times x times uh, negative 4. Negative 4. And over here to the right, minus two times uh, two, right? And then same inequality sign, negative one. Negative right here, negative one. False. Now just make sure you type it in right and continue working on it. Okay, what do y'all think about that one? Pretty easy, pretty cheesy, what do y'all think? I think the next one's my answer. I think that's answer. Gonna, you can just work in your head too. Then I go to negative three, parentheses times uh, negative three times uh, two minus a negative two. Ooh. Minus two times uh, three. Control this equal sign right there. Negative one. Negative one. That's my answer. Okay. Come on, machine. There we go. Last one. Super easy, guys. Somebody tell me another word for zeros. Anybody know another word for zero? Very important that you know this. Very important that you know this. Thank you so much. Now, how many zeros, how many x-intercepts does it have? I see one x-intercept, two x-intercepts, 
three, three X intercepts, Jasmine. Did you see that? See the graph is this one that goes up and it crosses it once, crosses it twice, three times. Can I ask you, I'm not getting after you, why did you think two? You were just looking at this, right? I'm not getting after you. If you don't want to answer, you don't want to answer either. I know you'll get it right in the test. Honestly, yeah. But this is, honestly, I'm telling you. Uh, I told you 60% of the, the, the thing is calculator, the other 40% is vocabulary. That's it. Like, there's no really thinking. Like, it's just, oh, vocab, what does that mean? Oh, zero is three times. Honestly, this one, uh, sky's the limit. How many people, if you were to put zero, uh, I think it's just way wrong. If you were to put one, you just went for this one here. If you would have gone with two, basically, it's like with you all, oh, you see there's two. If you'd have gone with three, you just counted one, two, three. I don't know. Honestly, I would have taken this one off and maybe put a four, right? And it crosses the graph four times. I don't know. Really, the sky's the limit. But again, just chill out. Remember the keywords, and you're good. Do you have any questions over this, guys?